Thank you very much. I'm Sister Mary Lili Tichiro, a member of the Missionary Sisters of Mary Mother of the Church, currently working at the Secretariat of the Association of Religious in Uganda as Director of Communication. Besides, I also coordinate uh, justice, peace, and integrity of creation programs. And uh, as far as justice and peace is concerned, we have zeroed on trafficking in person um, intervention or advocacy. Simply because in 2018, when we did some social analysis after benchmarking, we realized that trafficking in person in Uganda had a very, very high rank, so we zeroed on it to do intervention or uh, advocacy. And we began by further establishing uh, the role of the government in this, whether they are, they are curbing the situation, whether they are aware of it, and what they are doing about it. In other words, we went with ask, ask letters to the line ministries like uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Internal Affairs, and we even went to meet the Speaker of the Parliament, the then Honorable, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. And that was actually when she told us this is a very complex issue because uh, big shots are involved in it. Mm -hmm. So from there we knew the magnitude of the issue was, was was big and uh, and then also some of the security personnel asked us whether we were aware about the magnitude of the matter because it's it, it is about the network of its international network including the mafia and then we were like even if we rescue only one person it's worth doing and because of the need, we are still there since then. Apart from taking other interventions like cultural education, for example, during the lockdown, many girls dropped out of school because of pregnancy. As we know, some of them were impregnated even by their own parents, others by teachers. In other words, like caregivers turning around to become parents has been another uh, another area of uh, intervention. Yeah, as religious, I feel personally called to respond to this need that is uh, of trafficking in persons because the title of my institute is Missionary Sisters or Mary Mother of the Church. So many times as, uh, as sisters of the same family, we refer to ourselves as mothers and when I go out to, to minister to people and I see there is the element of coming in as a mother I willingly do it and that's when I, I, I embrace this ministry with my passion because of that mother element I, I practice as my charism of the congregation and besides um, I'm not alone, we're not alone, we're a network in Africa, we're a network of sisters involved in addressing this. We have a network, both of, uh, for Anglophones and Francophones, responding to the same. Uh, when you take countries like Cameroon and Democratic Republic of Congo, where some of the citizens know English, we directly interact with those ones. And then where others are directly inclined towards Frankfurt, they do that. And then when we organize webinars, we normally have translators. So you just press on translation, you, 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 you pick the English. I mean, you pick the language which appeals to you. Actually, in Africa, it's not only Frankfurt and Anglophone. We also have 
uh, Portuguese. So with these multicultural backgrounds, we have been able to manage so far we are managing. So uh, the assistance involved in responding to this as far as uh, our continent is concerned because it is an issue which affects us all. The sisters have an international network referred to as Talitakum Network. It is a, a network for sisters all over the world. And this work network helps us to address the issue of human trafficking. Just as the perpetrators have global network, sisters also have the same. Sisters and their lay counterparts or volunteers help us to do that. Okay. And also, those who have been rescued join this network. They also help us in, in, build, in boosting our morale, our strategies in uh, responding to this vice. Practically, as far as uh, uh, advocating for or advocating against human trafficking is concerned, we, we do sensitization, awareness creation, because there are people who are still ignorant about this vice. They are very ignorant about the operations, the systems of the of the perpetrators. So we do a lot of uh, advocacy, we do, especially we pre preventive precautions is what we, we normally offer to the youth. And then we also, uh, through our networks, we try to reach to the local level. And a few times we go on radio to do the same awareness. And then we have also of late entered in a rescue, uh, which came out of need because we realized in the process of training some of the some of the wise I can say wise victims begin to realize that where they are going is, is not safe. For example, there was a group of that one girls when they were recruited from up country, they were told they would be going to America to operate computers and work in supermarkets. But when the traffickers took them to the to the warehouse, I can say because the way they are there, the way they are kept, can you imagine on one bed six people, the one bed carries six people across, so it's like a warehouse, and uh, in the process of training and in their conversation in the warehouse, they were categorically told there is nothing like going to America. All of you are going to the Middle East. And all of you are subjected to housework. There's nothing like computer, there's nothing like supermarket, and other things. So you find some of these girls begin to sense danger, and when they, they, they signal us, we, we begin to respond to them. So in the process, we, we found ourselves in the rescue. So you find the local ones, and then those who are making appeals from foreign countries to be rescued. And then we empower these people. First of all, we accompany them through psychosocial, uh, we give them psychosocial accompaniment and then psychospiritual accompaniment. And when they are good to go, when they are socially a bit stable, and then they identify what they are able to do. Things like tailoring, in most cases, some of them go into tailoring, others in dressmaking, others who are teachers. They also go back to teach and uh, like some of those who are graduates also through our networks we find them jobs so that is what we we do at the moment okay. within uh, east africa uh, uganda and then okay this, uh, at the regional level we 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 are doing a lot of networking we're actually strengthening our networking within the church there are different church organizations, organizations that are formed to address issues of human trafficking. And then, as I mentioned earlier, it's very risky, it's very complex, and uh, an organization cannot do it alone. So what we have done is to enter partnerships and strengthen our networking within the region and even at congregation level. There are some congregations whose charisms are really uh, they are meant to address the plight of the needy. 
like the victims of human trafficking and uh, that's what what happens so networking is key in, in doing what we are undertaking and then uh, as a church of course prayer prayer works prayer works much as we, we don't want to tell people it's uh, it's not like magic but we tell them to pray and establish that personal relationship with God and many of them have testified how they were rescued by God's power and even some of the Arab uh, mistresses and masters have confessed that ah the God of, of Africa is very very strong so for us that is a it's a tick so it means something is happening and we encourage them to pray and we also strengthen our networks to continue praying for them. Okay. One of the major challenge is uh, security. Like on day one, when we began the advocacy, some of us even in the group already said, are we, are we safe? Mm -hmm. Then uh, we were like, yeah, for those who feel they are not safe, you keep behind because we do not want you to die twice. So you keep behind and uh, pray so that those who have gone ahead to do the intervention or to do the advocacy are also safe where they are. So that is one. And then even within the security, they also tell us, yeah, sisters, it's good you are here. You know, this thing is very, very uh, risky. We still have our families. We don't want to die. And it, it already shows that it is risky. And uh, we tell them, okay, so long as you are there for us, we shall work together. And then uh, there are also those who say, as I mentioned earlier on, are you aware of the magnitude? It involves the mafia. Who would want to confront the mafia? So no one. So that is the, that's the risky part of it. And then economically, no one would want to sponsor someone who is going to challenge the other. So economically, we do not have enough resources, but we are being driven by the goodwill, we are being driven by the faith in the providence of God. And so far, we are continuing. And then you find also sometimes one is doing more than one work. So the personnel in this ministry is missing. For example, in a country, for example, me, I am a coordinator of uh, Africa Faith and Justice Network, uh, a contact person for Santa Marta Group, and then uh, a, a contact person for Africa Faith and Justice Network, and a, a vice chairperson. Anyway, soon we are going to have our new elections, and I hope things will improve, but I am just giving that an, as, as an example. So you find that this, this uh, ministry, really needs a full-time person because you are in the office doing something uh, you have received a call that someone is in need of being rescued you are accompanying this person before before identifying the right partners to hand this person because you need to listen and gauge before surrendering the person to the partners because we do a lot of referral since the, the issue is complex okay yeah. There's a lot of collaboration between the church and the state in addressing this issue. I give you a recent episode where we organized a national prayer on human trafficking. Uh, this prayer really was meant to console the victims and uh, victims of trafficking and then also to enable the, uh, en enable the conversion of the perpetrators. And when we organized in this prayer, the church interfaced with the state uh, because our, our chief guest was the prime minister, that is Honorable uh, Robina Nabanja. And uh, eventually she was unable to come though, but she sent a representative, that is the, the, the Honorable Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, that is Honorable Betty Amon. She ably represented the Prime Minister and uh, the one who presided over the event was um, His Grace uh, John Baptist uh, 
John Baptist Odama, the Archbishop of Bolo. And uh, this brought together the church and the government in the play. And uh, besides, we also had other religious denominations. It was an interdenominational prayer where we even had Muslims, we had uh, other Christians of other uh, denominations, especially the Baha'i. People were happy to see the Baha'i for the first time participating in such an event. So, the, and then also during the process of rescue, you find some of the police personnel were not able to collaborate with us but then we again in the, we made another recourse. We made a high level recourse to the president's office in the office of anti corruption unit under which anti trafficking falls. And they gave us a very, very good police officer who even cancelled some of these victims whom, whom, whom we rescued. So there's a lot of collaboration, I may say. Besides, also we have Interpol. Like when we have uh, our our girls or boys res um, rescued at the border of Kenya or in Kenya itself, you find the Interpol of Kenya calling us because through Santa Martha Group, uh, we have we have involved the police to work closely also with the church and many of them are very collaborative. The first contribution is the goodwill. Once you have a good will, because there's that saying that where there is will, there is way. So as a, an individual, if you can cal cultivate uh, that feeling for another, because of late the Pope is really calling us uh, to synodality, moving together, uh, fratelli tutti, we, we should embrace ourselves, all as brothers and sisters. So once you have that, as an, a, an individual, you are able to, to be all eyes and ears to see what is happening in the village. For example, not long ago, we had some sisters up country, I will not mention the region, but up country, they were able to identify a trafficker who, had, who was only capitalizing in trafficking orphans because some of these orphans were a burden to the, to the, to the families who were keeping them. So, and then they kept these orphans, about 12 of them, in the, in the heart of a, an old woman. But because of the trust the local people now have in sisters, they tipped the sisters, and the sisters went in that village, and they were able to rescue all these 12 girls. So you find, as an individual, when you have the goodwill, even the local community trusts you. And then as a community, they approach you, and then you are able to do the needful. And then the sisters, or, 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 or even at congregation level, have been able to do advocacy in schools. We, like we have, uh, in brother school, we have already anti-oral trafficking in persons clubs. So that's another form of awareness creation. And then we have sisters who have also introduced them in schools and even health units. For example, when people come for clinics, they, they, they use that chance for awareness, even in the churches. Uh, they also, they are given a slot. For example, there was a sister who went for a leave and uh, there she was overwhelmed by announcements. Can you imagine an MP was recruiting his the members from his constituency. And this sister calls us and like, what can I do? Because everyone seemed to be believing in this recruitment, it's massive. So we told her, get a slot during mass and talk to the people. And through that she was able to rescue a few of the people who could be rescued. Okay. So that is at personal level and then at group level. We want to promote massive uh, sensitization on, on uh, awareness creation. It's like many people are ignorant because you wonder why a, a learned person like a teacher, a, a, a graduate, to be lured into such a, 
a business which is not lucrative at all, which is very deceptive. So we still want to continue with awareness, especially at the grassroots, so that uh, the people are aware and when these perpetrators come to, to do recruitment, they, at least they, they find no ground. That is uh, one thing we want to do. And then secondly, we want to strengthen our networks more uh, locally, uh, according to the congregations or the religious institutions, and then uh, at regional level, continental, even globally. So that is our target. And then we want to intensify our prayer, because I know prayer works. Much as, you know, sometimes people get impatient, but I know at the right time, God acts. Because even the survivors have testified about the power of prayer, and even their mistresses also testify about the power of the God of these victims. So for us, that one gives us courage to continue. And uh, we shall also continue using different platforms for sensitization, for example, the media, that is the social media, and the mainstream media for sensitization. And uh, I think basically that is it. And then maybe also to encourage, to, to introduce MDD, that is music, drama, and dance, because that is very popular platform for the youth. So I think through that, we can also reach somewhere. Yeah, the final remark is that I would like to appeal to you, my dear listener, the viewer, that be part of this advocacy group so that we continue to strengthen this network with your help, with your collaboration. I know you have very good ideas, you have strategies which you can share with, with us at any point in life, at any uh, any point near you, the, you can you could be having a shelter, people who are near you, um, you can reach them. You could also reach maybe through schools, whatever appeals to you. Even you can leave a message, yes, and then we, we, we can continue chatting. Thank you too.